Hello and welcome back to another video. And today we are looking at templates, specifically Rise templates. Um, I'm going to be walking you through a Rise template that I have built recently, and we will be looking at how and why you might use a Rise template. And I'll be talking you through what it includes and if you are to commission one, what you are likely to get. But before we get into all of that, my name is Emma Berry. I'm an e-learning developer, instructional designer with eight years experience across the industry. Um, and I also come from a design background. So I love to make courses that are functional, accessible and look amazing as well. Also bonus points, if you can count how many times I say template in this video, um, I've already, I'm recording this intro after I've recorded the um, walkthrough and it must be upwards of like 30 times, so I apologise. Um, but on that note, let's get into it. Okay, so let's be really speedy and go through the why of why you might use a Rise template. We're going to focus specifically on Rise for this um, because storyline is a whole other issue in itself and I'm not going to open that kind of worms today. So the first reason is consistency. So if you um, kind of work within an organisation or even as a freelancer and you're producing multiple e-learnings for the same brand or company um, or a suite of e-learnings of the same topic, then you might want to use a template to ensure that each e-learning looks kind of visually um, very, very similar. And this doesn't mean that, you know, you'd use the same imagery um, across each course because obviously things like that can be content specific but the foundations of each course would be the same so you know the text would be the same in terms of the color and the size um the, d the dividers the background colors the branding um and consistency is so key in design i mean just reducing the cognitive load for creating that seamless experience and it just looks better it makes things more professional it's Consistency is just super important. Also, from a kind of an employee perspective, I guess, if you're working within an organization and you have a new person join your team, a new ID, um, be, being able to just give them a template that is already kind of pre designed in that aspect from a visual perspective will make their life a lot easier. They don't have to go away and kind of try and learn brand guidelines and all that kind of stuff, which might be a skill set that they don't have. And that leads me nicely on to point number two is kind of a lack of skill set or a missing skill set. So depending on how you work or where you work um, within a team, you may not have somebody that has a design or a visual design skill set. Um, IDs, so instructional designers don't always have that skill set. And even some developers may not have or come from any kind of graphic design or illustration or visual design background. So having a template can do a lot of that thinking for people. Um, so the template would have already kind of considered things like color contrast and accessibility. Uh, the layout would have been tested to make sure that it translates nicely across devices. Um, a visual designer like myself would also, you know, seamlessly incorporate any brand elements, um, sort of little things like icons and all of that kind of stuff that somebody who doesn't come from that skill set might not find that very easy or it would take up so much of the development time that it almost wouldn't be cost effective or time effective for them to do it. Um, and this is not to say that somebody shouldn't ever learn to do that. And I do think multimedia and you know visual design is incredibly important for a developer to have an understanding of but i think people neglect the fact that you know this isn't a skill set you can learn overnight i mean i went to university and did a, a whole degree in design so it it takes years to kind of build this skill set up it's not something you can go on a two-hour e-learning and just suddenly be a graphic designer um so whilst i do think people should work towards having a better understanding of visual design especially if you are a developer, um, there's no shame in needing a bit of help with this stuff if it's not your natural area of expertise. So point number two, it can replace the kind of missing skill set if you don't have that in your team and then just ensure that your courses do look good visually. 
Finally, we have speed. Um, and I have lots to say about rapid authoring tools. Uh, that's for another video. But you can't deny that having a template can speed up the creation of your courses. And nowadays, everybody wants things done super duper fast. Um, and obviously, tools like Rise do help to speed up the creation of courses anyway. I will preface this by saying that templates are in no way a replacement for good instructional design. So this isn't a template that presets what blocks you should use within your course. This is just from a visual design perspective. This is a visual template. Um, so when creating these courses using a template, you would still put in the blocks that suit your content um, that you have designed in terms of an instructional design perspective. Um, this is more about being able to apply like the backgrounds and the dividers and things like that so that it looks seamless from a visual perspective. So this does not replace good instructional design. Um, and I think that's really key with these rapid authoring tools to just highlight that because a lot of people think with um, programs like Rise that you can just dump a load of content in, shove some pretty images and it's a, you know, a learning, it's a training course, which it's just not. Um, but I won't go into a tangent about that now. That's a whole other video in itself. Um, but speed, you know, having that template, um, having access to those backgrounds, those pre-designed um, backgrounds and dividers and all that kind of stuff just means that you can easily um, sort of apply those visuals to your blocks um, and sort of more quickly create your courses because you can save those pre-designed blocks as block templates in Rise. So that kind of allows you to just go to your template library, click on it, and then you just put in your content. So yeah, number three is speed. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I digress. So let's have a look into this template and first kind of see if you're somebody that's thinking about creating one yourself, or you are within a company and you're looking to commission one of these. Let's have a look at what you might get with them. So let's jump into text and image first. Now, this one is very much an example of one of kind of my sort of higher tier templates because it, it is almost a fully designed course. You've got a lot of assets in here. Um, for one of the kind of lower tier ones, you'd get less, um, but you can go on my website and have a read about what each one would include. So as you can see, we've got all of our separate blocks here and we've got our dividers in between as well. So when creating this, I tend to do a bit of a mix of what I call multi-purpose assets and block specific assets. So an example of a multi-purpose asset would be these starting blocks here. So this is just a full width image and this replaces my lesson header. So I've actually turned off the lesson headers and this is like a custom lesson header essentially. Um, and this is because the problem with Rise is if you set a lesson header, it repeats that for the whole course, so every single lesson. So this just gives people a little bit more flexibility if they don't want the same image every single lesson, um, if they want to mix up the colour scheme a little bit. And this one's multi-purpose because it can be applied to a number of different blocks um, as a background. So if I go back onto preview, um, it's been tested across devices. So you can see that it actually maintains its scalability really well and translates between devices really nicely, um, which is why it's great as a multi-purpose background. If we scroll down, we will have a look at an example of a block specific background. So um, a block specific is something a bit like this. So this is actually labeled as a kind of small power graph background. And that's again, due to the scalability of it. So we've got these two icons here. If I go into preview, I'll just scroll down. So obviously it looks great on um, desktop. Now it disappears on tablet view and that is part of why this is a block specific one because um, you might think, oh, that's a real problem. We've lost it. But actually, the opposite would be more of a problem. You wouldn't want those um, semicircle shapes coming into the text because it would then end up just overriding. And it would really ruin the accessibility. So in this instance, we've actually wanted those 
semicircle shapes to disappear off the edge. And that's why it's block specific, because this is sized to a sort of like small to medium sized paragraph of text. And again, you could use it with things like statements as well, because they're very similar sizing. But you can see here one of the multi-purpose backgrounds being used on this statement and how it looks really nice and translates well across the devices. Let's have a quick look at another multi-purpose background. So if we go into the interactivity in multimedia, again, here we go. That's another multi-purpose background. It's used for this flashcard background. And the, the purpose of these is to just add that little bit of kind of something else. So we don't have this plain white background. I'll go into the flashcards and things in a bit. Um, so here's another block specific background, and this is a video decal. Um, and again, the point of these is just so that you don't have plain background, plain background, plain background. This is a nice visual representation of, okay, here's a video. Um, and again, this disappears as you go through device views. Unfortunately, when you've got a video on Rise, obviously it takes up the whole space when you're on this kind of view, um, which is expected. But when you're on desktop, it's a nice little extra thing to have. And you'll find with a lot of these kind of backgrounds that they do, some of your little kind of decals or whatever will disappear because of the resizing of the blocks. Okay, so we are in Affinity um, now, and I'm just going to quickly show you what the graphics look like that you would receive. Um, so you don't receive the kind of, I guess, editable graphic design file. Um, like some people send out the AI file, but I don't work in Illustrator personally. So I sent out the SVG, so the scalable vector graphics um, as a graphics pack. And vector graphics can be edited in pretty much every graphic design software. So whether you use Illustrator or Affinity, um, you'd be able to edit them. Okay. So you can see this is my kind of set of artboards uh, as I was mocking up this template. We've got our lesson headers, we've got dividers, um, image templates, text and image backgrounds, and they're all clearly labeled. So if you commission a rise template from me, um, or if you're building one yourself as well, then um, it's good to kind of keep track of what each thing is going to be used for. The Within the graphics pack, you would receive your set of SVGs. Again, this is dependent on the level of template you've commissioned. And they would each be labeled really clearly. So video background, knowledge check background. Um, and if you have somebody within your organization that does have access to a graphic design software, then, um, and you've commissioned a template which includes these image uh, templates. I feel like I could get a tally going for how many times I've said template in this video. <laughs> um, then it's super easy to edit these. So all your kind of internal graphic designer would have to do is delete these icons out and just replace them with whatever suits your content contextually. And the same with like these flashcards as well. You keep the background, all you do is replace the icon. So it's super easy um, to then re-export these as SVGs and drop them into your Rise template. Same with like these process block numbers. I've done up to four, but you could then just duplicate this artboard and just change the number to five, six, however many you need. With the image ones as well, all you do is you just delete out the placeholder image and then just replace it with whatever suits your content. So I would say it's probably not worth commissioning a Rise template with these flashcard and image templates. Um, in them, unless you've got a person in house that is able to make those changes. Otherwise, obviously, these icons wouldn't always be suitable for the builds that you're doing. Um, so it's only really worth it if you've got that resource available to you. So yeah, so you'd get a graphics pack with all these SVGs in there ready to go. It's then I would recommend um, going into your Rise template uh, that I would have built and sent over to you and saving the blocks as block templates as well. And this just means that as you go down building your rise course, you are able to um, just really quickly add these blocks back in without having to go upload background, finding the file and doing it like that. Um, you could say, for example, these lesson headers as a block template. And then every time you start a new lesson, you can just go insert block lesson header done. So that will speed it up massively.
And here we can see you've got all your dividers as well, which again, these ones totally save them as block templates within your rise build um, because it's just so much quicker than having to find them and re-upload them and everything as well. And that's that. So if you have any further questions about this, um, if you want to know more about what these templates include, um, how the process works, the cost or anything like that, then just jump over to my website or alternatively leave a comment um, under this video and I will catch you in the next one.